If you're a regular viewer here on Test Drive, you'll know that I've been doing some older vehicles since moving here to Ontario, and I'm still looking for more if you've got something that you think is interesting and you're down here in the London area. But the last couple ones I've done all have all been 2013 model years, and this one's no exception. This, my friends, is a 2013 Cadillac XTS 1SB Preferred Equipment Group. Now, later this was known as the luxury trim or whatever it may be, but this is the first model year of production for the XTS. Built in Oshawa Car Assembly Plant in Oshawa, Ontario, it replaced the STS and DTS. And again, this is the first model year for this vehicle. Now, I've never driven one of these before. This is the first time I've had a chance to do so. And it's funny because when we drove the 2013 ATS a couple months ago, it was also the first time I drove one of those. And again, first model year for this vehicle. So Cadillac was in a transition period at the beginning of the 2010s because they were looking to sort of reinvent themselves and come out with vehicles that maybe not just the older folks would be interested in. However, <laughs> it's pretty much the only people who bought this car. And that's not necessarily a problem. Under the hood, we have a 3.6 liter LFX V6 high feature engine, produces 304 horsepower and 264 pound feet of torque. Not too bad overall. A turbo version was offered for this vehicle as well, but I think this is the one that you know, most people are gonna be looking at if they're looking for something that is somewhat reliable, uh, considering this car has just under 33,000 kilometers. That's right, folks, 33,000 kilometers. It is pretty much still brand new, and this is the way it came in to us here at Disbro Cadillac. We have not cleaned the inside or outside of this vehicle since it was traded in. That's how well kept this vehicle was. Now, by the time you're watching this, the car is going to be for sale. So if you're interested to know more about it, send me an email or DM me here on YouTube and I'll give you some information about it. The XTS or X Series Touring Sedan, I don't know who came up with these names, but they were clearly working hard on it, is built on the Epsilon 2 platform. Now we drove this back in 2018 when we featured one of the last Chevrolet Impalas available on the market. So this is a full size sedan. It's front wheel drive in this configuration, but all wheel drive was offered, which is a nice plus over the Impala. That's one of the things I talked about years ago when I drove it. As I said, that car would have been great if you could have had all wheel drive. So you could, you just had to go up to the Cadillac. Now we've got a number of features on this vehicle. I know it doesn't look like it's got tons of stuff. There's no really no enhanced safety tech, at least on this vehicle, but we do have illuminated door handles, rain sensing wipers, park assist sensors, LED daytime running lights, dual exhaust, and this comes in the white diamond tri-coat paint. Right now, I know the sun is like right in my face, it's clearly white, but sometimes it can be almost like a cream color. It looks really sharp. And honestly, because there's so few miles on this vehicle, this thing really is mint. I can't find a single flaw on the exterior or interior of this car. I clearly picked a good day to do this video because the sun is directly in my face. It is gonna get really hot today, which is why I'm here this morning, not usually where I wanna have the sun. Good thing is the interior is a nice place to be with the heat because we have the shale leather interior. So it's a light color, looks really nice. And again, with only about 33,000 kilometers, there's no fading or color transfer on the seats. Nice stuff there. But there's some good features on this vehicle, including dual zone automatic climate control, heated and ventilated front seats, a heated steering wheel, navigation, backup camera, and the backup camera is not too bad for 10 years old, a panoramic sunroof, remote starter, keyless entry, driver memory seats, and the sable wood trim that goes around the dashboard and other parts of the car. It looks really nice. Plus there's some ambient lighting. Now, we talk about ambient lighting here quite a bit on test drive. It's more like mood lighting because there's no color options for it. It really is just a yellow light that runs around the inside, but it looks pretty nice. Classy for a Cadillac of about 10 years old. Now the interior is pretty familiar to any of the mid 2010s that we've driven from Cadillac. Something like the 2018 Escalade, which was one of the first cars that we drove. You're gonna notice quite a bit of similarities with that. You know, the infotainment system, Cadillac Q is pretty much the same. You've got the flip up portion where you can pop up the HVAC controls, have a little bit of storage there. And then the buttons to the side of that, well, they don't really work that well, even though the car is still pretty low on kilometers. It just seems to be a design flaw with that. But overall, the space is really good. And you would expect that from a full size sedan. I have absolutely no problems getting in and out of this car. I have comfortable seating position, good overall visibility, and rear seat space is excellent as you would expect with a vehicle of this size. So if you are looking for something that you know maybe stands out a little bit because there aren't tons of these, they were used a lot for fleet. So you'll see a lot of black ones, but 
those have probably all hit their maximum mileage at this point and aren't really on the road anymore. So if you're looking for something a little different, this could be an option for you because again, as I mentioned, we drove the Impala and I really liked that car. And this reminds me a lot of it, just slightly classier. Now we're going to go on the road, talk about some of the driving dynamics of this vehicle. I'll continue to talk about how I find this car overall and everything else you need to know. And then once we're done with the driving segment, we'll come back here and talk about some of the things you need to look out for if you are in the market for a first and only generation Cadillac XTS. We're on the road now with the Cadillac XTS 2013 and I have to say this has been a pretty nice few days because again I haven't had a chance to drive one of these cars before so it's nice to be able to see how it is but you know I love me a big car. I'm not an SUV guy. If you've been watching this show for any period of time you know that essentially every car I've ever owned has always been a car and that's always going to be the case as far as I can go. I love driving cars so being able to drive one of these absolutely good. First things that I noticed with this is it is quiet and smooth. Those are the really two takeaway characteristics from this car and that's really the reason why you would be buying a 10 year old Cadillac. I'll give you a couple seconds here of silence, you can hear it. Or lack thereof, right? You're not going to hear much because it is very quiet on here. So even though this does have a Bose audio system and some of the, you know, slightly nicer things, I think the windshield and everything is UV laminated, but I mean, there isn't going above and beyond when it comes to overall sound insulation. It is still really quiet in here. And that's kind of what you expect. I mean, the Cadillac XTS, as I mentioned, ended up going to a lot of fleet, a lot of limousine services and taxis and stuff. And then the elderly population were buying them still because they wanted a large Cadillac and the CT6 hadn't come out yet and this was pretty much it so if you wanted a big Cadillac this is the way you went but I do like it and you know I've talked about it before you know when we talk about cars like Buick it's like hey maybe those people who buy Buicks they know something the rest of us don't and I have been impressed with a lot of the Buicks that we've driven same thing with this car I like it quite a bit interior space as I mentioned very good I mean I am seated very comfortably. I've got plenty of room around me. I know I'm a big guy. You know, I'm, some people ask too. I'm six foot tall, but I always say add an, an, another inch or so just because I'm big. My bottom is larger, so I might sit a, a little bit higher than if I were an average sized individual with being about six foot tall. So keep that in mind that that is something to consider if you are larger. But inside here, really, really good. I have been enjoying my time with it. Like I said, some of the tech not uh, the greatest. It, it does have its flaws here and there. We'll talk about that when we do our wrap up, but I mean, it does work. I mean, I've got the things that I really need. Dual zone climate control is kind of a must for me, and it is something that you would expect to find in a Cadillac of this year, no matter what, but heated and ventilated seats are nice. Heated steering wheel, very good stuff there. You've got cruise control. It's not adaptive, no problem. I don't want it anyway. And then, you know, Series XM radio and Bose, everything works. So it's all pretty good overall. And you know, storage space is pretty good as well. You do have some space here underneath the armrest. There's like a little cubby. Maybe you could put your key or I have no idea. There's small little storage areas that to me don't make any sense. But maybe if you're the type of person who buys a Cadillac, it uh, would make more sense to you. But aside from that, everything else is pretty straightforward with this car, uh, except for the glove box. Because like I said, in order to get into the glove box, you have to push the button that does not work. I'm pushing it right now. <laughs> You can hear me squeezing it and squishing it. Doesn't work. So can you imagine trying to use the hazard button? Not that great, but those are small flaws. I mean, everything else about this car is pretty darn good. Considering it's only got 33,000 kilometers just under that, it's a great example. Just like the ATS, this shows us what this car was really like when it was brand new because it's been maintained rigorously at Cadillac. So I know that the maintenance and everything has been done on this car. And the fact that the exterior is mint, I am saying like completely mint. I cannot find a single, actually no, I lie. The one flaw is the Cadillac crest in the front is fading a little bit, the color is fading, but you could probably get that replaced. <laughs> like, there's nothing wrong with this car, it's amazing. 
so I haven't been really enjoying my drive with it. Power performance has been pretty good too, right? I mean, it's not a sluggish V6 engine by any means. I know the car is heavy, but uh, it gets up to power, no problem. And if you really need more power, go for the V Sport model and get the turbo V6. But this is pretty good. I mean, I've had no problems. I've been driving around. Me and my family have been in it. So even if you've got some people in there, no problems whatsoever. The car is pretty solid. And you know, as I mentioned, I really like the Impala when we drove that bad boy a couple years ago, back in, well, it's been five years now. I liked it. I really liked that car. This is the same idea, just a little nicer, because you've got like the leather wrapped ish dashboard and the door cards and the wood trim you know you got the wood in the steering wheel like, it is a very thoughtful design vehicle it's elegant it's kind of classic cadillac which is what i like and really isn't trying to show off like there's nothing too flashy on this car it is just meant to be a humble full-size cadillac sedan built in the mid 2000s so or mid 2010s rather so it is what you expect but again it's built in Oshawa. It's built here in Ontario. That's awesome. You can buy a car made in Canada. Nothing better than that if you're Canadian. But I do like it. And <laughs> I've been very, very tempted about it. I'm not going to spoil anything right now because I do like to have a bit of a teaser, especially for you guys that have been watching us for a while. You haven't seen me on camera for a bit wondering what's going on. Well, I will be sharing some news and it might be related to this car. You're just going to have to wait and see because I have been extremely tempted to pull the trigger on this thing. So who knows? Maybe something's happened, but we'll leave that for now. I still want to talk a little bit about this before we wrap up and go into our buyer's guide because, again, this is a car to definitely consider. If you're looking for something that is, again, not over the top, nothing crazy, but something that is going to be reliable enough, because from what I can tell, aside from the you know things here and there, it's nothing to be overly concerned about, kind of typical for what you'd expect with a 10-year-old luxury car there's not much to go wrong on it so if you're looking for comfort looking for something that you know isn't going to stand out and, and get into too much trouble this is an excellent option for you i have thoroughly enjoyed it i mean it's smooth right it's really really smooth and that helps because it's a long wheelbase sedan right this is a long wheelbase version of the epsilon 2 platform so you're getting that added wheelbase to give you some smoother ride and i mean cadillac just did a great job engineering it i mean it's not over the top but it is what you would expect expect from General Motors and Cadillac. It is what you want and I like it. So if you're in the market for it, definitely consider it. If you haven't driven one like myself, you know, it's been on my list. Not necessarily like a top thing. I'm like, oh my God, if I don't drive an XDS before I die, I have not been fulfilled. But it's always been in the back of my mind. Like, hey, you know, I've never had the chance to drive one. So it would be nice to try it. Boom, bucket list complete. I got this out of the way and I have enjoyed my time with it. And I still will enjoy my time with it because I still get to drive it for a couple more days. So I don't have to give the keys back right away which is really nice because i've been enjoying it i mean <laughs> the small comforts they're so standard today but i mean a remote starter uh, you don't get that on a car like i have like my mercedes because they just don't believe in that ventilated seats ooh, nice my bottom is nice and cool especially after filming outside i know the car only says it's 23 degrees but the humidity is there so having those features again by today's standards you're laughing at me you're like ah, you go buy like a kia rio and get ventilated Ventilated seats, absolutely you could, but it doesn't look as good as this. I can tell you that this car does look pretty nice. But I think that's about it. I can't imagine anything else that I could really talk about that uh, we haven't touched already. So we're going to go back to the middle of the train station here in St. Thomas. We'll go over some of the things that you need to look out for if you're in the market for one of these. Some of the buyer's guide tips and tricks that we talk about. And always, because I filmed that before this, always, always, always have it checked out by a trusted mechanic. We talk about that every time. But it's always good advice. No matter what, have it looked at before buying but let's head back and talk about the things to look out for specifically when it comes to the Cadillac XTS. So Niall you say I want to buy this type of car and like I said you could buy this exact car if you want but there are plenty of them out there and again if you're looking at an Impala things are going to be kind of similar. There are some issues with this when you take a look online obviously the first model year of production 
has some more problems than say a 2018 had, but that's just based on, you know, overall complaints and stuff online, at least from what I could find. There's not a ton of information. However, <laughs> the reason why this is definitely a vehicle to consider is my service manager at Disbro wants this car. And if he wants it, it means it's a good car. Now there are some things to look out for. Cadillac Q was problematic and you could have issues where the screen just doesn't work anymore, becomes unresponsive, shuts off for periods of time. Seems to be pretty common with this generation. Again, I mentioned the buttons next to the Q system are unresponsive on this vehicle. You have to really push it a lot of times, jiggle it around a little bit, eventually you can get in. And that's a problem because the glove box is controlled by one of those. That's kind of important. And the hazard lights are controlled by that. Another thing that's kind of important. There's also battery drain issues reported on these vehicles, jittery transmissions, although this one has been very smooth, and the rear airbags, if you've got it, can start to sag, which is a problem with any airbag system, any air ride suspension on any vehicles, always gonna have problems like that. I didn't read any issues related to the LFX engine. It seems to be pretty solid and we've driven a number of these engines over the years. GM has obviously improved them over time, but for the most part, they do work pretty well and there's nothing really major to be worried about. Like I said, there was an all wheel drive option available for these vehicles, a few different engine options, as well as a V Sport model, which had that turbo V6 engine. 2018 brought in a facelift with similar features to what we saw on the Cadillac CT6. In fact, when I was driving that car, when we filmed the 1997 Mercedes S 600, I actually pulled up next to an XCS, but it looks so similar to the front end on the CT6, I thought it was a CT6, but regardless, still a full size vehicle with some changes over the years to make it a little bit more modern. So if you're looking for one of those, maybe go for one of the older ones, but if you don't really care about that stuff, you just want a good driving vehicle that doesn't have a ton of bells and whistles, like there's really no safety tech on this, which is good for me, this is the car to go with. As I mentioned, it is for sale here at Disbro Cadillac. If you want more information about it, reach out to me. Maybe it'll be sold by the time you actually view this. Who knows? Things like this have been selling pretty quick. And especially once I've done a video on it, they seem to get some popularity out there and help sell the vehicle. So who knows? But if you are in the market for it, let me know. Let us know in the comments too. If you have one of these vehicles, you've had one of these vehicles, or you've always thought about buying one, let us know what your thoughts are on it. All the time we're always in the comments getting back to you. Myself and James are working hard to produce some more content for you. So as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and take care.